Welcome to Words From My Face. On tonight's show, we are talking the NCAA Playoff Week 4 rankings, or at least the fourth time they've ranked them. We're talking a ton of basketball, including how Jeff Taylor got suspended for 25 games, Carmelo's injury, and Mem- is Memphis legit? Finishing off with some NFL trouble in Washington and a lot of Browns news. Just stay tuned. Greatest round ones of all time, of all sports, ever. Do you think so? Beverly Hills Cup, RoboCop crossover needs to happen. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Words from My Face. My name is Brian. With me, as always, producer extraordinaire, Brendan. Yo. And we are the one and only home of the Chewbacca Chainsaws. <laughs> Chewbacca had laryngitis, that's why he sounded so quiet. He Wookiees get sick. I mean they happen sometimes. You'd think that they don't, they live forever. They, it leads to the opinion that they don't ever get sick. He has laryngitis tonight. But I'm sure we can get him to give us a real Chewbacca. See? See he's still sick. Oh, there you go. He's fine. But what's going on everybody? Welcome to the Thursday night show, and of course it is Thursday night, so of course it is sports night. Um, and we have a ton of things to talk about. It's going to be a real fun show, but let's go ahead and start it off with the uh, same way we started off every Thursday night, and that is with the Chewbacca Chainsaw of the Week Award. <laughs> and this week's award goes to Melvin Gordon. Yes, he is the Wisconsin running back who ran for 408 yards and four touchdowns Whoa. in this week's win over Nebraska. Now, that is an NCAA Division I FBS, because they have multiple Division Ones. They have, like, a Division One a and 1AA and stuff like that. But this is the, the, the lead division record right there, breaking a former running back, LaDainian Tomlinson's record of 406 yards. So not Wasn't only that said, he, like, like, only, like, a couple of years ago? Um. Like maybe, maybe last a year, decade and a couple of years ago. Lies. Nineteen ninety nine. Last year, <laughs> a decade and a couple of years ago. Five hundred yards were done last year. Actually, somebody did rush for I believe seven hundred yards last year, but he was like a division two or division three. Oh, okay. Because I'm talking saying, about I the top. Division. We talked about this. Yeah. All those different divisions. Yeah. They should just lump them all together. No, 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 no. Watch. Trust me. They shouldn't. They should lump them all together. <laughs> Make them fight this is, for it. <laughs> this is the top division, and now this is even more impressive. Uh, not only because he broke the record, but he did it in three quarters. He did not even play the fourth quarter because it was such a blowout. So, uh, yeah, this this was a very impressive run, and this has also shot him up there in the Heisman Trophy talk. Now, it seemed like Mar- Marcus Mariota from Oregon was running away with it until Gordon had this game. And he's kind of neck and neck. If he has another big couple games to end the season, I could see it going his way. Now, Marcus Mariota, he hasn't, like, blown the doors off of anybody recently, but he's been consistently really, really good. So, you know, I think he won a, we gave him a Chewbacca Chainsaw Award a couple weeks ago because he had a great performance. So yeah, it's going to be a close way, race. When you got two Chewbacca Chainsaw Award winners going up for the Heisman Trophy, it's, it's a good year. Yeah, it's a good, it's a close race. That's for sure. Yeah. That's for sure. And but, you know, uh, both yeah, of them and, and I know the voters, well in the, uh, in the, the Heisman draft. voters are looking to see how many Chewbacca Chainsaw Awards you win a year. So this is going to even them up right there. So sorry to make it harder for you to vote, voters. But uh, let's go ahead and give him his award. <laughs> All right, and so that brings us into talking about, uh, you know, the NCAA playoff rankings. This is the fourth week that they have released the rankings, and we do have a little bit of uproar going on. We had a. I almost think. Hold on, I almost think that they shouldn't be doing this every week. It gets a little, you know, monotonous when it's every week. Like, wait a couple weeks. It's just going to change every game. No, why? What? If everybody wins, then it usually doesn't change. Yeah, but but it has been changing every week this year. This no, is the first year that thing. they've been that's doing awesome. the... Why do, you, why do you not like... They rank people every week. The, the top 25 rankings come Yeah, why does it week. have to be a big topic every week? Like They're making a big production of it. It should just be an automatic... A computer that just automatically adjusts them as the games go, no, whatever. No, but see, but then done. they actually do have computers. Computers are what do this. And it's actually 25 computers that adjust them as they go. Plus voters. 
Yes, so, but then they release it at a, at a certain point. They don't just like. It's, no, it's it better for them to do it this way. You know why? Because if they didn't, I wouldn't be able about. to talk about it every week. All right, so shut up. <laughs> shut up. I like this. Yeah, this well, maybe awesome. some people should comment down below if they're sick of hearing us talk about it every single week. And then nobody will saying. comment. Just like nobody comments on your dude love sounds like Jude Law. Nobody comments every... on your <laughs> dude love sounds like Jude Law. Jude nobody Law comments sounds on like that. dude love. Okay, so let's just get into the football part of this. <laughs> but yeah, so uh, so we did have some shakeup this week. Uh, now, you had the game between, uh, and I, I talked about it being a really big game. You had the game between Arizona and Arizona. Mississippi State and Alabama. Mississippi State was number one. Alabama was 95. 95. Number five. And after they were the game, 95. This is they were 95. Not good for them. And they jumped all the way to number one. So that is, oh, man. That is spectacular. <laughs> My lights keep flickering on and off, it seems like. But um, uh, so it was, a, it was a big game. Now, they only won 25-20. Actually, it was a little bit more of a win for Alabama than that. The cl- score is closer than the game really was. But it was an impressive win. You had T.J. Yeldon showing off why he's one of, going to be one of the top wide receivers in the draft this year. So it was, it was a good game. Um, and, but it was kind of surprising to see Alabama jump all the way from number five to number one. I knew this would propel them into the top four, but I didn't think it would leapfrog quite like they did because they jumped over Oregon, who still won. Uh, they jumped over FSU, which I'm not surprised. All, all I see for FSU is falling back. But it was it was pretty surprising. Now, I'm not surprised to say that Alabama is in the top four or that they would eventually get to number one. I figured that they might be at number one by the time they if they won out throughout their season because they, uh, they still do play Auburn uh, at, for, uh, I think, their last game of the season. And then there will be the SEC championship game. So I expected them to have some really quality opponents left to play. And, you know, probably strength of schedule-wise, end up number one. But it was kind of surprising to see them make that jump right here. Uh, then you have Oregon. They stayed in at number two. Uh, now, they don't really have any big hurdles left on their, their schedule. I think they have two games left. Nobody that big to play. But they will have to play the Big 12 champion. Uh, big 12. Pac-12 champion. I, I just can't speak tonight. Yeah. Nope. Nope. Or can't anyway. do it. Nope. Not tonight. But um, they do still have the Pac-12 championship game, so that'll be an interesting one. But they should, I, I don't see any, foresee any problems for them until that game. And then even that game, they're, they're pretty darn good. They've beaten everybody already in there. And then number three, you have SSU, FSU stayed the same. Florida State, again, people are griping because this is the only undefeated team in the top 65 of the rankings because they do do it all the way back to, like, 65. So people are like, oh, well, why, why aren't they... You know, number one, they haven't lost even last year. Well, that's because they don't really play anybody. They like to give up these halftime deficits. Uh, like when they were playing Miami this past weekend, they were down by like 10 points going into halftime. When they played Louisville, they were down by 21. Sure, they come back and win. That's why they don't fall too far back in the rankings. But they're not dominating these teams that they should be dominating with their ranking. And then you have well, number maybe four, it's all Mississippi their strategy, State. Though. Maybe they let the other team get a little ahead so they feel a little nice about themselves so they think they have the momentum so they can just show, hey, guess what? We can momentum shift this. We're done. Yeah, that's cool. Like if you're playing Madden or something <laughs> like that. And I am a fan of doing that in Madden. Like, oh, let me think, let him think that he's good and make this running play. And then when he tries it a hundred times in the second half, like it worked in the first half. Yeah, but we're not, they're not playing Madden. So <laughs> you got to be careful doing something like that. Um, but yeah. And then you have number four, Mississippi State. They did fall back uh, to number four, but like I said last week, I didn't see them. I saw them being the only team in the top four that could possibly lose a game and still make it into this playoff system. Now, they do have one big game left playing Ole Miss, who has fallen back a little bit, especially after the loss of their star wide receiver, Treadwell. But, you know, if they win out, I don't know. You could still see Mississippi State fall out. Um, even if they win out, because TCU is right behind them. They don't have any big games, but uh, they lo- they beat Kansas this past weekend, and Kansas isn't very good, and they didn't beat them by that much. So that's, I think, why they fell out of the top four. But you see how Ohio State is kind of surging. They only have one loss, um, and they're going to have to play Wisconsin in the Big Ten Championship. So that's going to be an interesting matchup, and that will be a premier matchup. So if they win that, don't be surprised if you see Mississippi State get bumped out and Ohio State make it into that top four. But we still do have, uh, I think, uh, three more weeks of these rankings, and then we'll have a month until the games actually get played. So mm. we have more fun stuff to talk about. And, um, Brendan, your dark horse has fallen out of the top 25. 
and that is Notre Dame. I still believe. He still believes. Believe. It's even darker of a horse now. Ha-ha. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're, they're playing that game of they want to fall back so that they can come back at the end. Yeah. Well, and, and another team I want to mention is number seven, Baylor. Uh, they're another really good team, and they seem to be able to put up 56 points every week. Now, that being said, they seem to give up about 45 every week, so you know, anything can happen. But the problem is that the Big 12 does not have a championship game anymore because the way they, they, they the NCAA rules, rules regulate is you can't have a championship game unless your league has at least 12 teams in it. So like a couple of years ago when the ACC brought in Virginia Tech and Miami and Boston College from the Big East, they were really trying to have a championship game. That um, feels like a weird rule. To be honest, well, like, I understand that they want to have enough teams yeah. and make it a, a meaningful championship, but I don't see why we can't just say, hey, it's our group, why don't we have, have just a championship? Like, uh, everyone's going to know that it's less meaningful because we have less players, but... But my only thing about this is that it's called the Big 12, meaning that there's 12 schools in there, but I believe there's only 10, and the Big yeah, that, 10 that's a little is bit called weird. the Big 10, Two. but there's really 12 teams in it, so... Yeah, they might want to switch it. Which I, I guess I know that they've like trademarked it or whatever yeah. like a while ago. I mean, ago, I guess they can't switch now. the league names, but they really should, because one has ten and one has twelve. Maybe so. they shouldn't keep naming them based off of numbers. Maybe they need to figure well, like something else out. The Pac-12 was easy. They were the Pac-10. They got two teams, Utah and somebody else. I can't remember. Uh, and then they went from the Pac-10 to the Pac-12. Easy enough. ACC, boom, easy enough. SEC, easy enough. You yeah. know, it doesn't matter how many teams are in there. You're yeah, still... yeah. I, I just think that maybe they need to drop the numbers in, in yeah, general. Yeah, probably like, find away something from else. the number system is, is, is better. Yeah, yeah I like, agree. Like that. south, north, even if you add a team for whatever, people know where it started, um, east, west, or just some other number, like the, the college football conglomerate, whatever. Just conglomerate. stay away from the numbers so that you can shift things around. Stay away from the conglomerates, do... too. <laughs> <laughs> nah, come on, you don't like conglomerate? It's, no one's even going to know. It's just going to be like CFC. Everyone's going to abbreviate it anyway. Well, uh, they might. They might. That's true. But hit us up. Let us know what you think. Uh, which one of these top four teams is going to fall out of the top four, and which one of the ones outside the top four are going to make their way in? Hit us up. Comments down below. Of course, at Where's My Face on Twitter. Where's My Face at gmail.com, Google Plus, and Facebook. Always good ways of getting a hold of us. But let's keep on rolling and talk some end. E A what? Yeah. And uh, let's start off with the uh, Hornets forward Jeff Taylor. He was recently suspended 25 games by the NBA. Now he had already sat out the previous 13, so I believe he's got 12 more to miss, which is a good chunk of the season. 25 games. You think it's only 82 games in the season? That's more than a quarter of the season. Um, and that was for mis- uh, he pled guilty this past week to misdemeanor domestic violence and malicious destruction of property charges. Now, the incident apparently was related to him and his girlfriend were in a hotel room. He pushed his girlfriend, probably pretty hard and violently, and she flew into a wall and broke said wall. Uh, the police were called Yeah, to, to break scene. a wall typically means you had to push fairly hard, unless yes, it's a really fair. crappy I'm wall. I'm going to say pretty darn hard. I'm going to yeah. say pretty darn hard. Now, it's better than haymakering your girlfriend in an elevator. Great race. But, um, yeah, it's still not good. It's still not good. But you see I, the NBA I, jumped out in front of this really, really quickly. And I think they're kind of taking a cue from the NFL. They're like, wait, we do not want to get into the position where people think that we're either trying to cover something up or we're not going to be hard enough on said players. So it seems like they're taking a good stance. I mean, 25 games for him is about $200,000. Uh, for some of the bigger stars, like a LeBron James, let's say, if he were to do something like that, it'd probably be closer to five to seven million dollars. He would. Be you know, I'm surprised though. this is only a misdemeanor. Well, that's what the police charged. It was misdemeanor. Yeah, I um, understand. I'm, just, I, I, I'm trying to think of any time that I've even seen anyone outside of movies be like break a wall that they were pushed into. And I've seen some, you know, some some fights go down, whatever. Like not not too serious, I guess. I'm I guess maybe people don't usually get pushed into walls if they're yeah, really fighting. if you hit it in between two studs, like the perfect spot, I'm sure it's drywall. I mean, it could yeah, I, mean, I know it's not that. Co- I, mean, I, I guess I've seen like people like kick through a wall, right? Like when they're like just straight kicking it. But I don't know. Like it, 
It just seems like that's that's usually a good bit of force, but maybe it's maybe it was a weak wall. Don't yeah, you know, we don't know what type of wall it was, but hands down, he shouldn't have done what he did. Yeah. Um, it's not a good situation for anybody. Involved. Yeah, I'm just saying. I, I thought it would, might would be a worse offense going on there, but well, maybe, but maybe I am glad to see that the NBA player. is really taking this seriously, and they are learning mm-hmm. the lessons from the NFL, so yeah. they're, they're taking it very seriously, they're coming down very hard, I mean, suspending somebody for more than a quarter of the games is a little bit, you know, I mean, 25 games out of 82, I'm not going to do the math right now, but that's more than a quarter of the games. That's a lot it seems to me like um, the, the NBA usually is, is pretty harsh on players, that the ones that I can think of anyway, and maybe I, I'm only thinking of a few big ones. Um, I, I guess you might know better whether in similar situations they've been traditionally this hard, I mean, but, until but I, I, I until, remember them being pretty hard on anything related to, to violence. Um, well, previously. until until the the big fiasco that was that uh, uh, what was it? It was the Pacers against the Pistons, where there was like just everybody was fighting everybody, even fighting the fans. Like I think the record suspension was about twenty games. So. <laughs> and well, that was back is, in, in like well, I guess that's not. I was going to say 20 games is a lot, but in, in the NBA it's not as much yeah. as I'm thinking. It's a good amount, it's just not yeah. that much. So they usually don't suspend people for that much. Uh, and, and you know what, to be honest, they usually don't have to, it doesn't seem like. But who, how much of that is just them being able to cover it up and them no longer being able to cover it up? And, you know, I don't know. I'm not I'm not going to delve back into the past in hindsight all of what they've done. I'm just going to say good job for doing it now and... Mm punishing people the way they deserve to be punished for bad things that they do. Uh, and uh, that's about it. Well, I don't know. Let us know what you think. Hit us up. Comments down below. Of course, at What's My Face on Twitter. What's My Face at gmail.com, Google Plus and Facebook. Always good ways of getting a hold of us. And let's talk about Carmelo Anthony. Um, apparently, it has come out that he has been suffering from sore knee since about October 30th. Now, if you look at your calendars, I believe that's either the first or the second game of the season for them. And this has been pretty interesting because the, the Knicks, they started out really well. They started out like 3-1 and one or something like that. And now I believe they're 3-7. and seven. So uh, they've kind of gone downhill. And without Carmelo Anthony in the lineup, they would go even farther downhill. But mm. this begs the question, because uh, we were talking about Derrick Rose last week, why not just sit Carmelo Anthony and let him heal up a little bit rather than make him play through the pain? Uh, I imagine if they the had sat him for a week or two when he it first started the question. This, it raises the question. Begs the question would mean that like it's a circular logic question. It's it's not a circular logic question, Brian. You're raising the question. There's some grammar for you guys today. What did I say? You said it begs the question. I said it raises the question. No, you said it raised the question after I said look at it raised the, tape. the question. Look at the tape. Everyone's going to look at the tape and tell them that the tape, I'm right, right. and I'm just Good job derailing people. the whole conversation. I you, know. <laughs> if you just derailed it all, nobody would have noticed. But no, Brendan and I, I have to derail noticed. everything. We would have gotten so many comments, or three comments. All of our comments would have been about that. No, none of the comments would have Because been. I was going to okay. throw it to the grammar trolls. All right, so I'm going to restart the Carmelo Anthony conversation so that when I cut this up into a clip, we don't have to have that whole conversation <laughs> in there. So, Carmelo Anthony has been suffering a sore knee since about October 30th. And if you look at your calendars, <laughs> that's about since the second game, first game or second game of the season. And, and after these reports, yes, Carmelo Anthony is the most integral part of that team, but that raises the question. Why not? <laughs> it does raise the question, doesn't it? If your team is going to be doing horrible anyway, why not just sit him, let him heal up, and possibly let him play better? Now, he has, I believe, had a 40-point game in somewhere in there, but the Knicks lost that game anyway. And he has been scoring well, but he's been scoring well just because he's taken a high volume of shots. I want to say he's like averaging like 30 shots a game, and that's a lot of shots for. But how you know, is he taking 30 he shots making? a game? You should be averaging 30 points a game, and he's not averaging that much. And and for a star player like that, if your team's already going to be doing so bad, you're really not playing for this year. I doubt I doubt you're playing for this year. Why not just give him a little bit of extra rest? Two weeks, you know, five games, six games. It's not going to hurt anything. All it can do possibly is help your team gain gain a little momentum when he's healthy. So I didn't quite understand why they're not why they're like oh he's just playing through the pain he's a warrior well great but what's the point you're not playing for anything right now 
you're you're playing for nothing. That's why you see teams like playing for the fans, Brian. Yeah, playing they're for playing the fans. for the fans. But I'm sure the fans would like it a lot more if they played winning basketball. And if you're going to lose the games anyway, it doesn't matter if Carmelo's in there or not. Um, no, so, I mean, I, I can understand, like, uh, appreciating a player, though, and having a player on your team, appreciating having that player that does, you know, tough things out and keep playing. Like, I, I can understand. Oh, yeah. From a business perspective, from a let's think about the future of winning games perspective, you're right. But I can see the appreciation and, and many fans wanting to see that effort put through. Yes, yes, and I agree. The effort is awesome to see, especially if your team is winning. They're not winning. If they're not winning, the best chance they have to possibly win is to have as healthy of a Carmelo Anthony as you can have. So why not just sit him a little bit, get him to 100% instead of him playing at 75% so that you can possibly have a better rest of the season. I mean, if you're going to lose those games anyway like they've been doing. Why not just rest them so that you have more possibility of winning more games later on? I mean, that's that's what I'm saying. I just think that it, it just doesn't make much sense for them to play him at the risk of just perpetually hurting himself rather than heal him up for, you know, miss five, six games and then come back, be 100%. And then 100% Carmelo Anthony is one of the best scorers in the league. Uh, if a 75% mellow is that good of a score, what's 100% mellow? Way better. And he's probably a little bit of a better defender as well. So I just think that they should go ahead and give him some rest if he's hurt and let him come back at 100%. I don't know, but I could be wrong. Let us know what you think. Hit us up, comments down below. Of course, at what's my face on Twitter, uh, Google Plus and Facebook, always good ways to get a hold of us. And if you beg the question or raise the question, what's the difference? That's actually pretty well, Don't answer difference. it, Brennan. That's for the listeners. That's for the listeners. <laughs> that's for the listeners. <laughs> but uh, yes, <laughs> so let's keep it rolling. And let's talk a little bit about Dirk Nowitzki. Uh, now, Dirk Nowitzki has become the fourth player to ever score 27,000 points in a, in a career for one single team. The only other players to do so were Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, and Karl Malone. And three Hall of Famers, three amazing players. Now, Kobe's not in the Hall of Fame yet because he's still playing. And I believe those are represent five of the top uh, leading scores of all time. Now, right now, Dirk Nowitzki just recently passed somebody and is uh, about ninth all-time. It looks like he's positioned to make it to about sixth all-time in scoring by the end of the season. And this is just something really cool because you don't really see it nowadays, especially with the free agency, with the different eh, – they're trying to make a salary cap happen. It's, it's just a rarity to see one player kind of complete his whole career. We're seeing that happen with, like, Tim Duncan and Tony Parker – but well, why would you leave San Antonio when you just win championships every year? I, I, I personally. But it's just nice to see in this culture of players just leaving, there's not as much loyalty for your teams. Just going all over the place, just going wherever the money is. Um, it, it's just nice to see because Dirk did take a little bit of a pay cut this year to come back and play for the Mavericks. Now, when I say a little bit of a pay cut, I think he signed a three-year, $30 million deal Um so he's still making $10 million a year, but he probably could have made 12 to 15 in a couple other markets in the, the area. So I, I'm not a big fan of Dirk Nowitzki. He said some mean things about Utah in the beginning of his career when they were playing the Utah Jazz, and uh, that's my second favorite team. So I hold a little bit of a grudge with him, but I do applaud him for you know sticking it out there and being a good person for his market. Because, yeah, Dallas, you have the Cowboys. Boo. Yeah, yeah, boo. boo. Ooh. We hold everything right. against you. And, and the funny thing is that the other players on this list, like Carl Malone did leave and finish his career with the Lakers, and Michael Jordan, yeah, I mean, he played pretty much the whole time with the Bulls and then came back to help the Wizards. Just yeah, that's he, that's like, not the same, though. With with Jordan, exactly. him coming back, that was he had retired for a significant amount of time. And yeah. it was and he was he like, man, I feel bad for the owner of the, the, the Wizards for a while. Yeah, he was and like, he was just feeling my... so bad about owning a bad team. <laughs> he was like, he had to play. I want to come back and help you guys. He initially uh, tried not to uh, not to have to come back too. Like he he stepped down as owner and became like president for a while to try and see no, if he can organizationally manipulate he things. Was, he was part owner and president of basketball operations, and then he sold his st- his shares in the the team to come and play for us and step down as president. Yeah. And then he wanted to come back as president, and Apollon said, "Nah, you're out of here." 
<laughs> so, yeah, Washington Wizards, the only people to ever snuff the, the greatest player of all time. <laughs> so. Who was the best player on our team, too, for a while and made us a bunch of yeah, money. Those like, two years he played, he did. He was the best. I mean, he was still Michael Jordan. Yeah, He wasn't the Michael he wasn't Jordan prime of the early Michael 90s, Jordan, but, but he was still, still the best Jordan. that we had had. <laughs> yeah, so... But uh, let us know what you think about Dirk Nowitzki, you know, hitting the the 27,000-point mark. Where is he going to end up in his career in terms of the all-time list? Like I said, I think he'll hit about six before the end of the year. But let me know what you think. Hit us up, comments down below. Of course, at Words to My Face on Twitter, Words to My Face at gmail.com, Google Plus and Facebook, always good ways of getting a hold of us. Um, And let's talk about the next topic. And I want to talk a little bit about the Memphis Grizzlies. And that is because they have started out on a 10-2 tear. Now, They lost, I just believe, last night to the Toronto Raptors, which is another conversation. But I just wanted to talk about, is Memphis legit? Are these guys really uh, championship contenders? Mm -hmm. Because they're playing in the tougher division. Everybody's going to agree with me there, uh, there, there, um, that the West is almost always the toughest division in basketball because you have to win almost 50 games to make it into the playoffs, whereas in the East, you could be under 500 by one or two games and still make it in the playoffs. But... So they've started off 10-2, and and I just kind of wanted to run down the roster and talk about where I think their strengths are. I really don't see many weaknesses on this team. but So let's start with their their front court. Now you you have Marcus Gasol and Zach Randolph. Marcus Gasol is blossoming into one of the best centers, if not the best center in the league right now. And I do say that with Dwight Howard in mind because Dwight Howard may be a little bit better on the defensive end, but I think that... Marcus Gasol is better on the offensive end because he has more of a range from the jump shot, but he still has the power and finesse for and great footwork. Uh, that's something you can't ever overlook is footwork, especially in basketball, to pound it in down low. And then you have Zach Randolph as power forward, and this guy's got a knack for coming up with offensive rebounds. Throughout the majority of his career, he's been a 20-10 and 10 guy, so that's a solid player. So they have a really, really solid front court. Now then you look at their point guard. My opinion for the quarterback of the NBA is the point guard, and they have a great one. They have a Mike Connolly Jr. He's really come come into his own as a floor general. He's he's a really speedy, fast guy who can shoot the three, who's got a great shot, but he's always pass first and score second, and that's really what you're looking for for a point guard. That is the most important thing, that they're looking for that person to, to score first, and then they're the secondary option. If Absolutely. you saw our conversation about Kyrie Irving, that's what his problem is. He's I'm going to score first and maybe pass second. So that, that, that can be a problem. But then you have um, another player like Tony Allen. He's come back healthy this year. That guy can defend every position from the four all the way to the one. And when I say four, it's power forward. He can play, guard the small forward. He can guard the shooting guard. He can guard a point guard. He's one of the best perimeter defenders in the NBA, and that's really important, especially if you expect to make a, a big playoff run because you are going to have to have them go against the likes of, uh, you know, a James Harden who's out there scoring all the time. Hell, he can guard a Kevin Durant. Not He can't shut down a Kevin Durant. Nobody can do that. Nobody. But he can guard a Kevin Durant. You know, he can guard a LeBron James. Again, he can't shut down a LeBron James, but he can guard him. So that's a really important thing. And then you have the supporting cast. Now, they have a, lot, a good, good couple of reserves coming off the bench, but really who I'm looking at is Vince Carter, a really nice veteran. Uh, yeah, he doesn't have the ups. He's not the slam dunk competition winning guy he was, but he's gotten his shot, uh, has gotten a lot better over the years, and he does have that veteran savvy. And then you have the swing man in Tayshaun Prince, who can go out and take a three-point shot, or he can battle for an offensive rebound. So you're really seeing a well-rounded team here. Mm-hmm. Now, yeah, and I think this year also seems like a good year to um, to come up and and do a bigger push because a lot of the other um, teams that we've been talking about as big contenders previously have have started, you know, breaking up. Like the Heat, they broke up uh, their yeah their big setup and you know um like and the cavaliers have cavaliers like haven't picked up yeah they haven't they're they're having troubles they're they're going to take a year or two uh with lebron james in order to get to a, a championship team it looks like at this point at this yeah, and san antonio be. whereas they are still san antonio don't get me mm-hmm. wrong they never really start the season off fast they always tie, kind of slow and steady wins the race for those guys again you you could think that is this the year that their age is going to catch up with them so 
yeah, Memphis has a chance. Now, do I really find them a, a, a championship contender? Unfortunately not. I really just don't see it because I don't see them having that superstar. That have LeBron been James, into a that championship Tim game? Duncan. Have they huh? ever been to a championship game before? Not that I know of. Yeah, I can't think of it either. So, uh, and they, they I'm have, pretty sure they haven't won one, at least. So. For a while, and I don't think that franchise has ever made it to the championship. But the, the th- thing I see holding them back is they don't have that bona fide superstar. Uh, again, they don't have a LeBron James. They don't have a Kobe Bryant. They don't have um, a Tim Duncan. Somebody mm. with that killer instinct that when there's two minutes left in the game and you're tied, you know you can go to them every single time. Now, they do have the complimentary yeah. pieces there. But, again, you fall yeah. a little bit short if you don't have that superstar. Yeah, this is and, a superstar and especially in, in basketball. Yeah, exactly. In basketball, they're, like you do need to have a good team all around to a large extent, but it's really a game that a superstar can really compensate a lot for having a few lackluster positions. Yeah. Uh, and a superstar can really is really what pushes championships. I, I can't think of any... The, the Get last a time, champion that has a championship team that hasn't had like a really and, and I did do my research on this and the last time I could see a team that didn't have a bona fide superstar win the championship was I believe 2004 with the Detroit Pistons and that was I, looking back that was the last time I could find one so I mean that says something there and, and before that like I, it, it's never, hard to to yeah. think of many because just doesn't happen yeah. I mean, Michael Jordan was always on his teams, you know, and Kobe Bryant, Shaquille even, O'Neal. Even when Michael Jordan was playing, he usually, it was like, it was him, and, and then sometimes it was Scottie Pippen, yeah, <laughs> so he had yeah, a bunch well, of yeah, so. But let us know what you think. Are the are the Memphis Grizzlies legit? Are they going to make it all the way? Um, am I wrong that they do have a superstar, and say Mike Marcus All or Mike Connolly, or, you know, do you agree with me? Hit us up, comments down below. Of course, at What's My Face on Twitter, What's My Face at gmail.com, Google Plus and Facebook, always good ways of getting a hold of us. Well, let's take this and move it on to another topic, and that is the NFL. Whoa! Boom! We don't have a sound effect for that. No, we don't. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> but let's start off and talk about the Browns. Now, I actually have two Browns stories, which is kind of crazy. Um, first, It's really uh, weird to talk about the Browns this much. It is. It, this late in the year. Usually it's just like, unless we're talking about how bad they are, it's really weird to talk about the Browns. But let's start off with... Uh, the Browns, and this is to the chagrin of all fantasy owners out there who drafted this guy, and I'm pointing the finger right at this guy right here because I drafted him in both the leagues I'm currently in, and they cut Ben Tate. Now, there was high expectations Gold that Ben Tate. Tate would come in there and really be the workhorse in that backfield because they had two uh, rookies in Crowell and West. And everybody's like, okay, Tate, you out from behind Foster's shadow. Now it's your time to shine. And he did, and then he got injured. And then he lost his starting position. And then he got cut. Now, lucky for him, two days later, or a day later, he was picked up by the Minnesota Vikings. And that is because Adrian Peterson is gone for the season. He has been suspended for the rest of the season. So uh, he will be playing somewhere this year and possibly next year. But I don't recommend picking him up in fantasy terms because, yeah, uh, he'll have his not much of a chance to break into that rotation. It may be a little bit at best, but... He's just stay away from him now. Um, now I still have yet to cut him from one of my fantasy teams. I think he's still sitting on my roster, and it's like, why am I doing that? Brian, 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 what was his injury? Uh, like an ankle or leg something. Ankle he was out for like something. six weeks. What, is it serious? Like, <laughs> well, he's back. He came back. Yeah, so he actually I'm had like a he got cut, rushing though. game after he came back, and they're just like, yeah, our rookies are doing it fine. We can pay them a lot less money and do the same thing. So. They let him go. So that's that's your Ben Tate story there. Uh, but then the Browns, um, and it probably couldn't have come at a better time. They're getting Josh Gordon back. And now this is the prolific wide receiver. Last year he led the league in reception yards and I believe touchdowns as well, and he still missed four games last year because he was suspended for four games last year. Um, and so this year everybody thought he was going to be suspended for the year because he violated the substance abuse policy again. But since it was for marijuana for a second time, they have since realized that, hey, a lot of states are legalizing and decriminalizing this. We don't need to treat this as such a a big crime. So they've lessened his suspension for it, which I think was the right thing to do. Um, And so instead of being 16 games, I believe he was only suspended for 12. And so he'll be back for the last couple weeks of the season. And this is probably the best time for them. 
because they did just lose to a, I can't remember who they lost to, but they're six and four. They're tied for second in the division now. I think it's a three-way tie or something crazy like that for second. Or wait, maybe they're tied for last because the Bengals have a tie in there. I think the Steelers are first. It's a really weird division. It's a really tough division because everybody's above 500. Arguably the best division in football. Mm -hmm. But you have a very interesting division going on there. And they're about to get a prolific, prolific wide receiver back. So yeah, if he's available in your league. fantasy football league, you might as well go pick him up because he won't be a bad start. I'm honestly uh, especially... a little surprised that, they, that at this point they shortened his uh... – his suspension. Well, they shortened it at the beginning of the season. This happened way back in the beginning. Because he was yeah, originally but didn't he get the league. suspension earlier? Like, I'm just surprised that they... He did it in I training camp. In training camp, he was suspended for the year, and then they came out with the new rule, and then they lessened his suspension. Oh, but they, they came out with the new rule for everyone, and it, oh, yeah. they just applied yeah. the new... Um, the new setup to him. It wasn't that they just said, okay, for your case, we'll no, shave no, it off. The, it was for okay. the entire... For in the entire league. So, uh, yeah, so you look for that. Oh, and that's who they lost to. They lost to the Texans last week, which is pretty sad because Ryan Mallett got his first start ever. Um, I'm not saying Ryan Mallett's bad or that he'll be a bad quarterback. Usually if you're playing your first start in the middle of the year, there's something up. Uh, now he is one of the backups. Everybody called that the battle of the backups because Brian Hoare used to be a backup for Tom Brady, and so did Ryan Mallett. So... <laughs> You know, it's pretty interesting there. Um, but let us know what you think about the Browns. Are they going to make the playoffs this year? Are they going to win their division? Hit us up, comments down below. Google Plus and Facebook, always good ways of getting a hold of us. And let's move on to something I don't really want to talk about, but we're going to anyway, and that is the trouble in Washington. Dun, dun, dun. Hold on. And that is because of... You're getting a big womp, guys. Yeah, it's a, it's a pre-womp. Uh, that's, a, that's a womp. Now... They started out not so bad at the beginning of the season. RG3 got hurt. They still weren't horrible, but they weren't good. No, they were RG3 pretty bad. come back, and they're still sucking. And they just lost to one of the worst teams in the league. Uh, they put up seven points against the 30th-ranked defense and gave up 27 points against the 30th-ranked offense, I believe. So, yeah, not so good. And they just looked embarrassing. Now, we're not even going to be talking about the embarrassing game. We're going to be talking about all the comments that happened afterwards. Now, in a little bit of RG3's defense, everybody who read a newspaper article on Monday saw the headline, RG3 throws his team under the bus. Let me tell you what really happened in said press conference. First question is, how do you think you guys played? I played horrible. I did not do well. It was I did not throw the complete the passes. I did not have good mechanics. I did not do this and that right. That was RG3 talking. Second question, so what do you think went wrong? I did this wrong. I did that wrong. It was me. I did this. I did that. Fourth, qu Third question. So what, what had to be happen? I needed to play better. I needed to do this. Fourth All question. Solid. All solid. All solid. All solid. You know, fourth question. What happened here? I did that wrong. I did that. So question after question, what went wrong? What went wrong? Finally, the question comes up, you know, what else happened? And he said, look, I need a whole team to play well. It takes 11 guys out on the field to play well. If Aaron Rodgers and Peyton Manning's guys don't play well, then, hey, he, they're not going to win the game. You know, it, it was pretty bad comments. He kind of made it sound like, hey, it's not my fault. It's everybody's fault, especially because everybody else didn't play well. Um, now, Which again, is a little odd after everything else that he had just been saying. But, well, it's because okay. he was being pressured. To, I know, to I know, but just the now, way of happened. saying that harshly, like, you could say, like, well, everyone else also yeah. had a bad game. Whatever. Yeah, well, but, and and now, granted, these are media-trained players. They know they're going to be in front of these cameras. They know the, the reporters are looking for that headline, so they are trained not to, to say stuff like that, but he was goaded into saying it. Now, mm -hmm. Should he have said it? No. Should it have been vilified like it was? No. You know, it was really bad. But so after that, after that press conference happens, on Monday morning you have Deshaun Jackson sees said headline, RG3 throws teammates under the bus. And if you saw the game, Deshaun Jackson probably should have caught about five touchdowns for about 60 yards each touchdown, but he was missed a whole bunch of times. Uh, so Deshaun Jackson then goes out and goes on to Instagram or Twitter, one of the two, and puts out a little saying. He says, you can't do epic stuff with basic people. Now, I replace stuff with the real word, but um, 
you get the drift. <laughs> pretty much, pretty much saying, "Don't point the finger at me. It's your fault." Which, if you looked at him last week, he came out in defense of RG3, saying, "We all got to stand behind this guy. We all got to do this." And you see, kind of Sean Jackson falling back into his old ways of talking big when they're when the team's not doing too well. And that was one of the problems that Philadelphia had with him is he talked a little bit too much. Granted, so not so good. You kind of see the team, the yeah. locker room is unraveling. And then Jay Gruden comes out on Tuesday after all this has happened and says, you know what, RG3 should have shut his mouth. He clamps out pretty much on everybody. He starts going, well, RG3 doesn't have good mechanics. He was doing three-step drops instead of five-step <laughs> drops. He was missing people. He was doing this. Now, all of his comments were totally true. And you know what? As a player, I re- would respect him for coming out and saying this because he was not lying. And another thing he said was that I'm not telling you guys anything I have not already directly told these players. Now, when it was asked if, hey, RG, and he said, RG3 should worry about him, himself and his position and not about everybody else's position. Again, true. Go out there and play your job correctly, and everything else falls into place. Same with everybody on the field. But it was construed as pretty harsh statements. Now, again, I don't really mind the harsh statements. RG3 I mean, he's a coach. I think coaches should have harsh statements, yeah. to be honest. And, and you want, you got, he has to demand that respect in the locker room, saying that there's nobody better than anybody else. I am the top dog, everybody's underneath me, and you're all equal there. You know, and he was kind of just trying to get everybody in the line. Then, what happened on Wednesday was he kind of came back and um, uh, retracted some of those statements. He, he kind of went about and said, hey, I shouldn't have said what I said. I meant what I said. I shouldn't have said it the way I said it. Um, which, you know... Okay, whatever. You I know, thought what he Maybe said we thing. just need to... He should have taken his own advice, to be honest. And kept his mouth shut and ha- no, maybe a few less no. press conferences. The, you know what I'm saying? Say people, what he has to say to the players. Look at coaches like Bill All Belichick. They will come out and they will trash a player who does bad. Okay. If you do bad, yes, they say it to their face, but they're not going to let everybody else. I mean, he would. No, 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 but but I, I understand. I'm what I'm really getting at is maybe everyone needs less press conferences. Like I know well, we need it to talk rules. about. The, Head coaches but, are supposed to have press conferences, I believe, three times a week. Star yeah, but does every player need it? Do they star need players it? Like, are, why? Star why? players are, they have to, and we'll get about this, we have another story about this, have to make themselves available after the games and once a week, especially starting quarterbacks, have to be available two times a week, I believe, for press conferences. These are NFL rules. Yeah, these but are why? Not, why does NFL have these rules? Is it just so that they, they have wanna, stuff to talk about? Are you serious? <laughs> like, really, you, you're asking that question? Look because they want to be relevant every day of the week. <laughs> that's why. They want to I be, think that's it's like detracting from the game. This is clearly detracting from the game at this point. Yeah, it, you might say that, but it's the NFL saying, hey, people are still paying attention to our teams. Money, 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 money. You know, that's all we care about. So it, that's not even what we're getting into. It's Again, I believe Gruden should have said what he said. I don't think he should have had to come back and retract a statement. Whatever respect he might have gotten from the other players in the locker room, he just totally got stripped away because, and now this is a theory, but this is a very predominant theory, especially in the Washington area, which we happen to live in, um, is that Dan Snyder and Bruce Allen, the general manager and owner of the team, uh, said, hey, how dare you talk about RG3 like that? Go out and apologize. So uh, it just it just shows me that, um, yeah, we're going to be losing in football games here for the next 10 years until Daniel Snyder finally gives up. but uh, and So you mean when Daniel Snyder either dies or becomes so senile he doesn't realize he's signing well, away the when team? When he gives up and sells the team, that'll be it. He's but, not going to. But one no, thing I not. did notice from RG3 did have his Wednesday press conference. Um, one thing that was good is something that it, it seemed like RG3 was really upset about having to do it too, but I don't think this is a bad thing. Um, he repeated the phrase, I'm focused on San Francisco nine times. When asked about previous statements, when asked about you know what Deshaun said, what Jay Gruden said, well, I'm just focused on San Francisco. I'm just focused on San Francisco. And honestly, if you look at some of the best teams in the league, look at Bill Belichick, what he did after um, their big blowout loss to Kansas City right before they turned everything around. We're focused on Cincinnati next week. They just lost by 30 points. They're asking what went on in the game. We're just focused on Cincinnati now. We're just focused on Cincinnati. Stop talking about that stuff. You can talk about that stuff in the locker room. Don't put those negative stories out there because I don't care who you are. 
you are going to pick up a paper or you're going to pick up a web, uh, pick up your phone and look at ESPN or something like that. These are athletes. They do care about what's going on around the league. They're going to see that negative stuff, and it does affect yeah. them. But it, there, it there are two things there, though. One, yeah, to some extent, some of those uh, athletes, like, like for instance, uh, Deshaun Jackson, should have known well enough about how the media works. They sh- should have gone back and seen what the full thing was like. You know, just to, to see if it was really just RG3 throwing people under the bus, to see whatever is going on. The second thing is, going back to what I said before, maybe we don't need all these... Like, I know it's the NFL rules have these press conferences, but it's detracting from the game. Like, the fact that they have no, no, to no. say... But what you don't understand is it's detracting from our team's game, playing of the games. It's not detracting from the NFL one bit. It's making them a bigger media presence. The The whole fiasco with RG3 and Deshaun Jackson, they love that. They absolutely know. adore that. That brings them more market share. That takes up more time on ESPN that they're talking about just the NFL. That's free advertising for them. They love this. They're never going to change that. Never. <laughs> Only when, when players come. Like, if you go to New England area, they know nothing about what's going on on their team. Every player is listed on the injury list every week. They have no clue. But they come out and win. You know? DC, we've known a lot about what goes on. Why this person feels that. We, you know, it's been very cool to have such open and honesty, but it doesn't hasn't helped us win games. So, yeah. I think a change of culture is what we need, and it's not what we're getting. So, but that's that. Uh, but hit us up. Let us know what you think about the Washington Redskins, um, and how bad they are. Are they ever going to get better? Is RG three the quarterback of this franchise, or is he just, you know? A blown pick. Hit us up. Comment down below. Of course, at what's my face on Twitter. Google Plus and Facebook. Always good ways of getting a hold of us. Um, and uh, we're going to have to move it through fast because we're kind of running out of time. Took a little bit too much time about trouble in Washington. Well, let's talk about Marshawn Lynch. Uh, this has to do with the, the press conferences. And he was recently fined $100,000. Uh, number one, he was actually fined last year for missing a press conference. But they said, okay, well, we won't fine you as long as you will we'll hold this back as long as you're good from now on and so apparently he broke the rules on uh, after after Sunday's loss to the Kansas City Chiefs he kind of just left he didn't want to talk to reporters he was very upset and understandably so it was a close game they're in a close division race just took off he was out he didn't want to talk to reporters at all now he did later on call a reporter and said okay here's your after game interview thinking that this would help you know, solve the problem of him not being available for the interviews. But the NFL said, nah, not good enough. And they fined him $100,000. So well, you know what I say. I say, good on you, Lynch. I was, uh, that's all I was just saying. Like, I, I think it's getting a little ridiculous with the necessity of interviews, like so many, of, so much availability interviews, like so much with players, coaches, everything. Uh, like, I understand, yes, the NFL wants to stay relevant to make more. I think they would obviously stay relevant regardless. But Yeah, but, but they want to be the most relevant. I, they wanna, and that's, but that's but I definitely understand Lynch not right. wanting to go out and talk after after a, a loss, and well, I think it's yeah. no, better I for him No, I don't blame him at all. Yeah. I really I don't. Better, I don't hate better him better to take that all. route than to get um, upset about it or to go the route of saying something you, you're going to regret the next day. Uh, yeah, I no, I agree. I agree. Yeah, so I, I don't blame Lynch for doing that, but, you know, I mean, it, and again, the NFL, they should calm down. As long as one or two, the head coach has to talk, maybe the quarterback and one or two other players, you can leave Lynch alone, really. Yeah. You know but this guy hates the media. He has been very, like, during the Super Bowl press week, that, like, there's a whole day where they have to be in front of everybody, every camera, everywhere. Like, he just wore his helmet and had, uh, you know, um, his teammates answer questions for him. So he he really doesn't like the media, really doesn't like to have to talk to the media. And, you know, you can look at a, a player like Ricky Williams. He had mental health issues, and it was really bad for him to talk to. He had anxiety issues, severe anxiety issues, especially talking to the media. So I think that they should be like, okay, you really hate this? Got it maybe we won't have to trot you out there. Every now and then, yes, you are going to have to talk to people. That is part of our brand. But let's give them more of a break. It just seems like they're kind of crazy. But, hey, what can you do? And then, um, yeah, the last story I want to talk about in the NFL is really about the Packers um, and how they're just doing amazing, especially Aaron Rodgers. Uh, when they started out the season, I believe they started out 1-2. and two. Since then, they have gone 6-1, and one, and that was after the comments Aaron Rodgers came out and said, hey, Packers fans, 
relax. R E L A X. Relax. Because they, everybody was all panicking. Oh, they're going to suck this year. What's happening with Rodgers? Why aren't they doing so great? And he's just like, relax. We got it under control. We played a little bit of a rough. We were a little rusty. Hey. And they have gone 6-1. and one. He has put up, uh, I believe, the best passer rating in said time. He has the most touchdowns in said time. I think he has 20 touchdowns and three interceptions or so, something like that through the season. So, yeah. And they put up 108 points in the last two games. Not too shabby. Um, whereas they are not the best record in the NFC, I want to say they're the best team. So I'm hmm. looking for them. But uh, hit us up. Let us know what you think about the Packers, how far they're going to go. Or let us know about Marshawn Lynch. Hit us up. Comments down below. Of course, at Words My Face on Twitter. Words My Face at gmail.com. Google Plus and Facebook. Always good ways of getting a hold of us. And now it is time for Words My Face Fantasy Football. Bum, 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 bum. Um, we're going to run over the games last week. And um, playoff time is only two weeks away. Now, one division is already locked up, but the division I'm in and Brendan's in is wild, wild, for lack of a better term, wild, wild west. It's a wide open division. So let's start. Cowboys and Indians this week lost to the person who will be number two um, in the South Division or whatever, Division Two, which doesn't matter. Um, winning 95, Team Tavner won 95 92. Now, Cowboys and Indians did have Aaron Rodgers with 28 points, but not really any huge production out of anybody else. Team Tavner didn't have huge production out of anybody, but just consistent double-digit points out of everybody. So we saw him win. Then you have Amingo ate my baby to my chagrin won because he's the guy right ahead of me. Um, 103.58 would help if Team Baker would set a proper lineup, but that's neither here nor there. Um, led by Jay Cutler with 23 points, Jeremy Macklin with 15. So you had a, a solid outing from Amingo ate my baby. Now, it was kind of surprising. Peyton Manning only had 15 points for Team Baker, so that's always just mm. cool. You usually expect a lot more out of him. Then we had Team Hugel play Team Crawford. Team Hugel is number one in our league with a 92 record, and they won 86-65, so no big blowout. Now, Team Crawford did have Le'Veon Bell with 27 points, but then got zero points out of Bradshaw, five points out of Calvin Johnson, one point out of Matt Bryant, two points out of Josh Reed, and three points out of Larry Fitzgerald. So... You're not going to win with nobody scoring any points. Oh, and Team Hugel had Mike Evans, who had 209 yards and two touchdowns. That jerk against the Redskins. Then we have Words My Face Chainsaws. You lost. Womp, womp. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't help when you have Arian Foster in your lineup when he doesn't play. Hey, it, pff, he was called out. Uh, maybe it was on Saturday. I don't know. Yeah. But... <laughs> he was called out on Saturday because we'll talk about it in just a second. Um, but yeah, you, you that, Jamal that hurt Charles, me a lot. Play, wow, and, and, then and then you had two else players on the bye week too, and you still lost to them. Yeah, I was surprised by that, but it's you know, Aaron, uh, Aaron Foster was out. I that, that was the thing. Like I was and minus confident. five points from your defense never helps. Yeah, that yeah, from my defense who usually gets me twenty points. So. <sighs> It never helps, but eh, what can you do? And um, and my my kicker got only six, and he usually goes you know, double digits at least. But then we yeah. have the disgruntled Wookies winning 91-46 over Team T. I was led by Eddie Lacy, had two touchdowns for 22 points. A.J. Green, 18 points. And as I said, I picked up uh, the backup, Alfred Blue, from the Houston Texans because I knew that Aaron Foster wasn't going to be playing, and he had me 15 points. So... <laughs> Yeah, not so bad for me. But yeah, I mean, I have a five and six record. I play Amingo Eight, my baby, this week, and Chainsaws the last week. And if I win out, I am in the playoffs. So my if, future's in my hands. Now, what I would request, though, you consider doing though, is, no, is no, beating Amingo Eight, my baby, right? Yeah, I, and yeah, I'll then do that. Losing do that. that last game. No, I'm not going to do that. No, I'm not going to do that one. I'm going to win out. See, if you win this week and you lose next week, I think you still have a good shot of making it in, though. Um, you're, maybe. You're 6-5 right more. now. So if you win this week, you'll be 7-5. and five. If I win this week, I'll be 6-6. Six and six. Amigo 8 My Baby will be 6-6. Six and six. And then let's say Amigo 8 My Baby loses and you lose, then you win. You're in. The playoffs. So, hey. But hit it up. Look, you can always yeah, look it up on, on top. ESPN. We do do a standard league on ESPN. It's the Words My Face League. You can always check it out. It is public, viewable to the public. But, uh, yeah, I think that's going to about do it for the evening. As always, I am Brian. With me, as always, producer extraordinaire, Brendan. Yo. 
and we are going to headbang our way out of this joint. <laughs>